Raoult's law to calculate the vapor pressure above a solution, not, not a solvent, but a solution, is quite elegantly put together. Take a look. Something you're aware of, that if you have a solvent at a given temperature, well, it'll come to a certain vapor pressure above that solvent if in a closed container in an equilibrium condition. Okay, but what if we dump in solute, and let's make it 50% in terms of its number of particles. 50% of the solution is now made up of solute and 50% solvent. Okay, then how much blockage is going to occur from the solute? Well, it'll probably block the evaporation of the solvent to about 50% of what its vapor pressure was before. Sure it will. And so, Raoult's law, quite simply for calculating the vapor pressure of a solution is pressure of the solution equals the original pressure of the solvent times the mole fraction, because we're dealing with particles, so we'll go to the moles, the mole fraction of the solvent over solute plus solvent. Because look, see, if this is a 50%, so this mole fraction would be 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times the original vapor pressure here would give us half the vapor pressure from the solvent going to solution. Okay, now, if this was actually 25% solute, then the mole fraction here would be 75%, or 0.75 is what this would equal, solvent versus over solute plus solvent. 0.75 times the original vapor pressure gives us three quarters of what we had before because one quarter solute here is going to do an a, a amount of damage of blocking the solvent to about one quarter of its original vapor pressure. Isn't that cool? Okay, oh by the way, this is all if the solutions behave properly. There are no attractive forces or repelling forces between solute and solvent or the, uh, the solute is not too uh, 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 volatile where it, where it would evaporate, they have to be ideal solutions. Let's look at a couple of formula manipulations here. Okay, we all agree that PV equals NRT. No discussion, that's absolutely right. Oh, okay, divide each side by V and you get P equals NRT over V. Sure. Okay. Now, you agree with me, don't you, that moles is actually grams divided by grams per mole, which is molar mass? So we could say that. Why don't we just substitute that then, grams over grams per mole, in for moles? Okay, watch what I'm getting at. Then, of course, because grams is divided by grams per mole, we can just put that in the denominator over here and get that as a formula. Recognize this. Grams per unit of volume. Well, that's called a density. Now, in this case, the density is in grams per liter because the volume is going to be in liters. So anytime you do these types of problems and get the formula that we're going to in the end here, the density must be in grams per liter. Okay, so this is just density. So we put that in there. Pressure equals DRT over M. I'm calling that molar mass. Big M can be concentration, but it can also be molar mass. And look, when we manipulate by multiplying both sides by M and dividing both sides by P, we get a formula. Molar mass equals DRT over P. That's right. We can calculate the molar mass of a gas if we know its density with that formula. Molar mass equals dirt over P. Just another nice little relationship that you should know about. Do you agree that chi, which is mole fraction, equals the number of moles of the solute over the number of moles total, which is usually the solute plus the solvent. Sure, that's another way of writing it, right? N over N total. Okay, now, ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, so N equals PV over RT. So we can substitute in here PV over RT divided by PV over RT, or let's take the pressure of that solute there, PV over RT, and just call that P1, that's the, the solute's pressure, that would be divided by whatever the total amount of pressure is, number of moles total, times VRT, because this is PV over RT total. But here's the thing, if you keep the volume and temperature constant, volume and temperature constant throughout, then these two constants cancel, and what are you left with? 
chi equals P, or that P1, over the P total. So listen, here's the point. Whenever you calculate the mole fraction of a gas, you also know what its pressure fraction is. It's the same thing. So if you got a, a, a pressure fraction of uh, oxygen in the atmosphere of 0.23, well, that's also the mole fraction of oxygen in the atmosphere. Cool.